What up, what up, what up, people? It's me, L Teddy 27, Angry Teacher Chronicles. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my epic review for Love and Hip Hop, Season 6, Episode 7. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So, y'all, let's get right down to it. This is Season 6, Episode 7. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So we start right back out where we left off. Lyrica and A1 are at the house fighting. And for the life of me, I don't understand because now A1 is all serious and feels like, oh, why is she up? Like, he's real surprised that she's upset. And then talking about, and then had the nerve in the confessional talking about, oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. She don't, she don't want to communicate. You got to talk about these things when you're in a relationship and this, that, and that. Really? Weren't you just the one who was over there laughing at her when she was trying to communicate with you? And you and Mama Pam was over there chuckling it up, laughing it up at her. And now you expect her to talk to you? Girl, bye. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So, Mama Pam goes over there and tries to talk to her like that was going to work. Child. But y'all, we got our hashtag FTFB moment real early this episode. Real early. Our hashtag FTFB moment came when Mama Pam told, ask Lyrica, um, said, you got a whole child up there. And then when Lyrica was getting ready to leave, she had the nerve to tell Mama Pam, because now all of a sudden she remembers that she has a child, and to tell Mama Pam to go up there and get her child for her. Girl, Lyrica, if you don't sit your ass the fuck down somewhere and fall all the way the fuck back, fall the fuck back, Lyrica. Take it back, hoe. Run it back, bitch. Okay? How the fuck are you calling yourself a mother? A real mother. And you got an infant child. An infant child. In the house. And you ceremoniously did all of this packing. Or fake packing. In this suitcase. That I'm sure was empty. And in all your packing. And in all your anger. And in all of this histrionics. And all of this showboating and all of this playing up for the camera. Hello, Lyrica G had to remind you, hey, whore, you are not just a wife. You are a mother. And you call yourself leaving, but then you ceremoniously leave the child and then got the nerve to tell Mama Pam, oh, yeah, by the way, go get my child for me. Wait, what? So from here on out, Lyrica G, I don't want, not Lyrica G, Lyrica Anderson, because Lyrica G is the mama. But me or not, Lyrica, I don't want to ever hear you talk about, oh, my child. Oh, I care about my child. Oh, we got a child together. Oh, my son. Oh, my son. Oh, my... Di nah, bitch. Nah, bitch. Fall the fuck back. Fall the fuck back. Because we saw exactly how much you care for your son. Because a real mother, when you packing up, before you packed up any of your stuff, you packing up all your baby stuff. Uh-uh. I'm taking my child with me. I'm packing me some pampers. I'm packing me some formula. I'm packing me some bottles. I'm packing me some wipes, some diapers, and all of this stuff. Because I'm not leaving my child here with you people. My child is coming with me. But you didn't even think about your child until Mama Pam told you. Child, if you don't sit your ass the fuck down somewhere, Lyrica, not here for it. Wasn't here for it. I don't believe her whenever she um, claims from here on out that she's here for her child and she cared for her child. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. No, ma'am. Anyway, moving on. Next, we had Kay Michelle. I think she was at the lawyer or something talking about the surrogate. I told y'all we ain't featuring that. The only part that I liked in this sec um, section of or segment of the show was... Anybody else notice the surrogate's boyfriend is kind of cute there. I was like, hey, surrogate boyfriend. I forgot what his name was. He was just a little piece of eye candy right there during that segment. 
Otherwise, I think I muted the television or whatever. Because otherwise, I wasn't paying it no mind. Not until he came up on camera when they showed him. I was like, hey. Moving on. Uh, next, we see Jason Lee reports about April being backstage at the B2 Gay concert. And then you see the boys meet up. You got Fizz. Then you got Ray J. You got Spectacular. Spectacular. And J-Bug. J-Bug. Who chat? I told y'all from episode one. The more J-Bug and Spectacular you have on my camera, the happier I am. Because I really wasn't paying attention to what they were arguing about or what they were talking about. I was just here for J-Bug and Spectacular, who gave me my complete life. My complete life. Now, if I'm going to have this whole group session, group frolicking going on with the likes of a J-Bug and a Spectacular, I guess I'll let Ray J join in, join in on the fun just for some added meat. Because we all, I mean, at least Ray J, we know, got a nice slab of beef going on down there. So I guess I would let Ray J, I would string him along in this little frolicking that I'd have with J-Bug and with Spectacular. Fizz, you could throw his ass all the way away because he serves me no purpose. Why is he here? He has little meat. I don't feature him too much in the looks department. So he can keep it on. Struggle on. Struggle on. Struggle on. Anyway, please help me understand why Fizz is also so hell-bent on dragging April everywhere with him if that's not his um girl i mean it doesn't take someone with a with an advanced degree in quantum physics to figure out fizz why it's not a good idea for you to be bringing her backstage and show uh, and stringing her all around because for this to be your friend i well maybe we just ain't heard about it but how many of your other friends is backstage? I mean, maybe you do have all your other friends backstage with you. And maybe we only hearing about April because she's on the show. But I'm just wondering if you, I mean, you sitting up here arguing, well, why does it matter that April is on the tour? Bitch, it matters because Omarion is the, is the fucking lead singer. And without Omarion, you don't have a group. Bitch, it matters because Omarion has a baby with her. I mean... Sure. You're not that dumb, Fizz. You're not going to try and even make me believe you that dumb. You're not going to try and make me believe that you are st stupid enough not to understand why they're telling you it's not a good idea for you to have her backstage. You're not going to make me believe that you that dumb, Fizz. I mean, really. And why are they taking precious camera time away from my two booze? J-Book and Spectacular. Why is precious camera time being taken away from them? I just want to, inquiring minds want to know because I'm not here for, I mean, come on now. Come on, Mona. I mean, if it's going to be a trash ass season, which it is thus far, at least give me some eye candy in the form of J-Boog and Spectacular because I'm here for them. Moving on. Mr. Ray and Apple Watts go to this doctor for Apple's tits. Now, I was with Mr. Ray on this. You do not go to a plastic surgeon that you found in a goddamn strip mall. I mean, that's just as smart as saying, oh, I'm going to go buy this sushi from the corner gas station. Oh, I saw, saw they were selling sushi at the gas station around the corner. So I'm going to go buy me some sushi from over there. Those are things that you don't do. We're talking about serious invasive surgery, okay? And you're doing this at a, uh, you know, doctor in the strip mall. Chow, chow. I mean, what do you expect? These are not the brightest people in, on earth. You know what I mean? These are not the sharpest knives in the, in the drawer. So I, I guess it makes sense. Lyrica is staying at the hotel and Lyrica G comes over. And her best friend, Sia, comes over. Now, all of this talking and carrying on, neither one of them, neither Lyrica G or Sia, is the best person to take advice from about anything. 
anything at all in the world. So Lyrica is sitting up there and seriously taking in and receiving advice from the, the likes of these two people. I mean, it it plays right into the narrative that these are some of the dumbest bitches on earth. We call them Debo. D-B-O-E. Dumbest bitches on earth. I'm just telling you what they are. That's what they are. Move it on. April and Fizz go out to dinner. Fizz has to let April know, listen, whore. The people got problems with us. The people got problems that you backstage, so I can't let you backstage. Because you can say whatever you want to say. Whatever checks Mona is giving you, Fizz, we know it ain't as good as the checks that you're receiving from this tour. We already know that. So, baby, you better do what you can to secure the bag for this tour like j, -B like j Book told you. Because that little, those little uh, coupons to Applebee's that Mona is giving you for each episode ain't going to cut it. Move it on. Um, Paris and Zell meet up with April at the bar. April, uh, Paris um, says she's going to Chicago with April. Zell talking about going to Lyrica G's listening party. That's not going to end well. Zell trying to explain why he had Summer Bunny on the like, I Zell, there's no explanation. I mean, we understand because you're a messy queen. Because you are dirty, downright. I mean, ugh. <sighs> he's, he's on the set. <sighs> Moving on. I, I just can't. Monice goes over to K. Michelle's house. I guess that whole segment happened. April and Paris are in Chicago. Paris, you're a little too big. No, fuck that. You're a lot too big to be wearing that much damn bright ass yellow. Bitch over here looking like the goddamn sun. Okay, what the heck? I mean, she was either trying to be the sun itself or trying to be a giant peep or something. Like, I, you know, the little yellow peeps you get at um, Easter. Like, I was trying to understand where, who told you that big bright ass yellow was going to work for you? Girl, girl. Like, do we need the little solar eclipse glasses to look at this segment of the episode? Like, I'm just saying. Anyway. And then April went through all this explaining of why Fizz is so close with her. And why she want to fuck him. And why she want him up in her uh, couch or whatever. It was not making sense, honey. Listen, we ain't buying it, okay? Nobody's buying it. I mean, it's just not making sense. We're not buying it. We see through it. April, April, April. Just be honest. You only did it because, at first, because you knew it was going to make Omarion mad. And then, in the middle of y'all fucking, maybe he hit a couple good strokes with his little peen. And you got all uptight and up in your feelings. And now, you all in love in this, that, and the third. Girl, bye. Anyway, Mama Pam and Lyrica G have dinner. Baby, listen, let me tell y'all something. That struggle ponytail Mama Pam had on salvaged the entirety of this episode outside of the J Boog and Spectacular segment. It salvaged the rest of this episode. I was trying to figure out how much snatching and pulling and prying went into snatching them four strands into that fucking struggle ponytail that Mama Pam had in there. Baby, let me tell you something. Mama Pam was not even blinking. When I tell you Mama Pam was like this, the whole episode like this, with her eyes stretched wide open, because you know that junk was snatched, honey. She was snatched, honey. Baby, that woman did not breathe, not breathe, did not blink the entire episode okay i mean the entire segment because baby the snatcher that they had to do to get them four strands up in there oh child <laughs> i mean i was listen y'all i was so fixated on who was that like i figured you had somebody that you ever seen the scenes where somebody got to put their foot on her back 
and actually be up like climbed up on her back with they foot in her back pulling them four strands into that ponytail baby they deserve a medal of freedom a nobel peace prize um, not peace prize but a nobel prize for pulling them goddamn four strands into that good damn ponytail honey Anyway, I mean, that's the best I could say about that segment because did we really expect anything to be resolved between the likes of Lyrica G and Mama Pam? I mean, every season we go through this whole mediation meeting or reconciliation meeting between Mama Pam and Lyrica G and it never works out. Remember when them hoes went on that little vacation and they was on the beach and they were supposed to be friends now and then all of a sudden that ended with them fighting and carry, get ready to fight and carry on? Girl, y'all need to let it go. Y'all never gonna be friends. I don't even know why at this point Mama Pam and, and Lyrica G are even trying to sit down with each other. Just a mess. Just a damn mess. Apple Watson and um and and Mr. Ray go um for her titty um surgery. Now I couldn't help but think while they were walking into this establishment at this strip mall, this plastic surgeon. What is the CPT or procedure code, the medical procedure code or CPT code for fix a flat? Because I swear to you, that's what the fuck they're using in that goddamn surgery center. I mean, come on now. If that ain't no fix a flat that they put in that woman's body, child. Just a mess. Just a damn mess. I mean, you knew it was a mess. Because no credible physician, no real licensed doctor is allowing family members and friends into the OR, into the operating room. And you're having serious invasive surgery. Okay. If it ain't a pregnancy where someone's giving birth, doctors, real licensed Physicians are not allowing family and friends into the OR. I'm sorry. Shit just does not happen. I mean, I was even scared for Apple Watch because I was wondering was one of those strands of green weave that um old girl had in her hair gonna get caught up in her um inside her body when they sewed it up. Cause they were like, I mean, they were sitting there gazing at her titties all wide open and shit. That they hadn't even put the sutures or the stitches in yet. Like, come on now. Mona. Mo Mona. This what we doing now, Mona? This what we doing. So, the storyline for next season is going to be Apple Watch trying to get them removed. Because they now causing her body to shut down. Because all kinds of green strands of weave are stuck inside her body. As foreign objects. You know, whatever. Anyway... Anyway, I don't know why Mona and them, it, oh, I just can't. We end the episode with K. Michelle meeting up with her surrogate to tell her she don't want her to surrogate no more. I told you I don't care about it. And that was the whole episode. Y'all, that was Love Hip Hop. We're fighting through it. We're struggling, struggling to make it to the end of this season. Y'all. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would, God. Who, Lord, that was Love and Hip Hop. At, uh, not Atlanta, Jesus. Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, season six, episode seven. I guess we got to come back for it next week, God. We only like halfway through the season, and we're already just done with it. Y'all will be back, I guess, next week. Same time, same place.